After you've put on two coats of lacquer, uh, I wanted to show you how to glaze. I also wanted to show you how to distress your project. Now remember, you do not have to distress to glaze. But if you do distress, you must glaze. So I can glaze the whole thing without distressing the project, but I can't vice versa. Now, if you're going to distress uh, or make your project look older, that's basically what you're doing. There's a few simple tools and implements that I use typically. We use a simple chisel, very sharp one. Uh, we use an awl, a scratch awl. It has a sharp tip on it to, uh, for wormholes. A uh, file, which is a rasp, it has some sharp teeth. It has big teeth. It's not a small one. It's got some pretty rough teeth. And then the last one is something that I made. It's for wormholes, so I'll demonstrate each one. The most common one and simple one is probably just an awl. It uh, creates the look of wormholes, so you simply just hit it all around and make it random. Now, if you want a lot of wormholes, you could go all the way around if you wanted, but uh, this also will do a lot of wormholes at the same time. It has a bunch of screws sticking out, and you simply just whack it in a few places. There we go. Make it as random as you can. Okay, and I would do that over my whole project. And remember that I'm just doing the door, but this applies to your entire project. All right, now the file is very simple. You can take the file and as if the door got scuffed on the edge or rubbed against something and scrapes there. That's all I need to do, scrape an edge. If I want to kind of take a corner off a little bit, I want to hit the, uh, the edge here, hit the corner there, and you just go around and find certain areas that you want to uh, scuff up a little bit as if it was aged. A little bit there, I can even take it and, and hit it and it will leave dents where these sharp uh, metal pieces are sticking up. All right, so a little bit there and we're probably pretty good. Okay, so that's called filing. Now, uh, the, this is for hewing is what it's called. You take the chisel and if something just straight up got scraped along there, you just scrape right in and that takes pieces out. Okay, we take it and we scrape right in, a nice long jagged mark right there and a little right there. And I can take it and scrape some of this nice edge off. Now I don't want to dig in and pry up. I don't want to do that. Uh, very, these are very light, they're not very deep. I don't want to take a hammer and dig in and then rip it out of there. That's a bit too much. Okay, and we'll take a nice gash there. Okay. And this is fairly heavy. Remember, you can go lighter. Just a few scrapes and you can be done. Very light distressing. I'm doing a heavy distress. There's medium distress and whatever you feel is right. Probably the most common and, and the funnest one is chaining. A simple chain that I have here and I uh, had a student weld some nuts and bolts on there because you don't want um, distressing that is very regular. It, so it looks the same all the way across. It looks man-made. So a little bit of uh, extra things in there to break it up is very good. So you simply take the chain and hit. I had students that'll do this. Okay, and however you want to do it, just be careful. There are glue joints here. So if I hit it really hard right here and really go at it, I could crack the wood. So be very careful, don't overdo it. Don't overdo it. All right, so a few more marks here and there. All right. Now that you're done with that, you want to lightly sand it down. You want to sand your whole project down with this sponge sander that we used before to sand the lacquer. And this is only to take out a lot of the pieces that may be sticking up. When you hit it, some grain goes down, but that forces others up. So we lightly sand it again, just a little bit. Just to get all those things flat and smooth. Now I can still feel the ridges, but that's fine. Okay, now we can actually glaze. Now if you choose to glaze, this is where you can, you can start up, is open the glaze and we need to stir this up as well. Please make sure to use a proper tool, a flathead screwdriver. Do not use a chisel. That is not the right tool. Flathead screwdriver, put it in, twist, and it comes right off. Now, like stain, there's a lot of pigment in this that you that all settles to the bottom that you need to mix up. So please put it down and mix this up. And again, when I lift it, there's a big globs of, of a thick glaze on there that all needs to be reconstituted and mixed back in. 
Now that you've finished mixing, there's not a whole lot of extra on the end. It all seems to be all uh, mixed up again. It should have the consistency of a very thick paint. Very thick paint. Okay, that's pretty good. Just scrape that off a little bit back into the bucket. Okay. All right. So now we're ready to glaze. So I'll kind of set that aside so we can actually see what we're doing. So again, have a small rag to apply and a big rag to wipe it off again. So it's similar to stain where you put it on wipe it off. It's the wiping off that you need to, to uh, pay attention to. So on this, like stain, I'm going to get a big glop of it and put it all around. We just go all over the place. Now because it's kind of thick, it doesn't want to squeeze into these corners as well. For example, I got it in this corner. This corner is good, it's all in there. This one, however, is not. You can kind of see a little light area right there. It's not all the way in, so I need more glaze to get it in there. Squeeze it in, get it really sloppy, and then I can use the rest to go all the way around. Now you need to pay attention to the distressing, if you distressed, to get glaze into those little distress areas of your door, of your project. So if you need a little bit more, that's fine. But remember, a little glaze does go a long way because you're going to be wiping most of this off. A majority of this will come off. So there's no reason to slop it on so it's black and then wipe all that off. You're just wasting the glaze. All right, so make sure you get into all those areas. And again, I'm only doing the front on this demonstration. Don't worry about fingerprints, at least not yet. Not until we start wiping it off. Okay, just a touch more. And again, it doesn't take much on these little areas. And like stain, the glaze will soak into the end grain a little bit more than edge grain, so it's going to be a bit darker. That is very, very common. Don't worry about that. Okay, I've got fingerprints everywhere. It doesn't matter. That's fine. The front is done. Now, it's the wiping off that you need to watch out for. Now, the flat area is easy. Just ball up your, your rag here and just simply wipe it off. That's the flat area. Now, as you can see, as I wipe it off, all of those distress areas show up nice and dark. And that's exactly what we're looking for. That's the look. It's a heavy distress. To get in here, use your finger, kind of get into that area as well. Now, now comes a part you've got to pay attention to. Okay. I want to leave some dark area right where this 90 degree angle is, these decorative edges. So I have to wrap the rag around my finger tight, just one layer, nice and tight. Use the pad of my finger. I'm not digging in with my fingernail. And like that. Okay, turn it, pad of my finger, and pad of my finger here. Now, by doing that, I'm leaving glaze here in that decorative edge and up above it here where that 90 degree corner is. When things get really old, dust, debris, and junk just start settling in those areas because they never get touched. So to mimic that, we have to leave some glaze in there. So now I kind of match the rest of it around that scoop cut so you don't have a light area and a, dark, a definite light and dark area. Match that a little bit. Okay. And that's it. Now it's hard to see on the video, on the camera, but I've got a lot of swirls in the glaze. When you're all done with that, you want to go over it with the grain. Make sure to hit it the direction the grain is going so I don't see it. So on this piece is sideways, these edge pieces are vertical, the bottom is sideways again. And then watch out for your fingerprints as well. Um, okay, now it's time to do the edge. Do the same thing. Wrap it around your finger nice and tight and I put it flat. I do not want to dig into that area like I do with stain. Stain I want it out, this I do not. So I can get all that off, that's flat. Leave some glaze on the edge. Here. Right there, flat on my finger. Leave a little glaze, or glaze around it. And let's get a new area here. And there. And we'll finish the last side and then finish it up. Okay, so my edges are done. There's a little bit of glaze all the way around the outside edge and there's some inside. Anywhere that you have this little 90 degree turn, a, a decorative cut of some kind, you need to leave an edge of glaze, just a little bit of glaze. Now, as you can see, the glaze sticks to the bare wood that I filed off or shaved off or uh, all my marks for wormholes. The glaze goes into those areas, makes them look darker. And that's exactly what we want. You'll repeat this process throughout, again, through your whole project. Remember, your last wipe needs to be with the grain. 
My last step is to look around for fingerprints. Get everything nice in the same direction. Oop, there's a mark right there that I don't like. Make sure to look around. Does it look good? Wipe it all off really well, and then move on to the next section. Do this in sections. Glaze dries much, much faster than stain. So do a side, wipe it. Do the door, wipe it. Do the drawer front, wipe it. And be careful not to let it over dry. It's very difficult to get back off once you let it dry. So when you're done, you've got a nice door. Either it's nicely glazed and it just looks like this nice area, or if you've distressed it, it's beautifully distressed. It looks nice and old. And people pay a lot of money for extra distress. So uh, make sure to wear your gloves and be careful not to slop it around the table. And it'll look fantastic when you're done.